Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the fish locker out on the shore. Glorious day today. It hasn't been. <laughs> Anybody who saw my last video knows that we have had some terrible easterly weather. Whenever we have some bad weather, it causes a lot of this. If you can see around here, all the beaches are all covered in this loose kelp and weed. Fantastic for your garden. And you honestly never know what you might find in it. There is a ray's egg. That is the egg casing from what looks like possibly a small eyed ray. So you honestly never know what you might find. This is a great time to go for a little walk along the shore. Whether you're beach combing, whether you're foraging, whether you're rock pooling, it doesn't matter. You never know what you might find on days like today. We have a big spring tide, two more hours of the ebb. So the tide's going out for two more hours. And I'm going to follow it down and have a look in all the rock pools. I have a foraging bucket, my foraging hook. Let's go see what we can find. The amount of fresh growth that we've had over this past couple of weeks as it's got warmer is incredible. These rocks were almost bare a month ago. We have serrated rack. You can see by the edges are almost serrated, aren't they? Like a little saw. We have some, that's called bunny ears, Irish moss, also called carrageen. This is pepper dulse. These are thong weeds. That there, ulvalactuca, that's sea lettuce. It's just everything. There's probably 30 species of seaweed in this one pool. I get asked quite a lot about which seaweeds are edible. Now, there aren't any poisonous seaweeds, so technically all of them are edible. But there are some poisonous algaes. So if you are going to be collecting seaweeds, you need to make sure that you clean them properly. Because although the seaweed might not make you poorly, any of the algae living on the seaweed, that might. If you are unsure, best to avoid it. Anyway, let's go. It's very easy to get carried away and go over the edges of your wellies when the water's this clear. You get too distracted. These, like little blisters, are called an oyster thief. And you can imagine why, can't you? Because they float. If some of these attached to an oyster, they would pick it up and float it away. Actually, I'll turn that one over. We have that is a little male furrowed crab and here under this rock here we also have a really small edible crab and a tiny tiny cushion star oh no well we have quite a few one two three four these little tiny white worms the squiggly ones are called keel worms. The ones that are like a little tiny spiral are called spirobis. If you ever do turn rocks over like this to see what's underneath them, it is vital that you turn them back. Very, very gently put the rock back over. Because any of those creatures living underneath it, you leave them exposed. You want to protect them, so turn the rocks back. There's a few. A few more furrowed crabs. And oops. And some broad clawed porcelain crabs with some more cushion stars. That is 
called a Cornish sucker or a clingfish. And away you go lad. It's actually stuck onto my finger look. It has a sucker underneath which is why it's called a clingfish. Hanging upside down there. Come on off you come. There you go. There you go. Here we have a little sea urchin. Took that out of the way there. So when I put the rock down I don't want to squash it. A little porcelain crab. And there if you can see it, it's a strawberry anemone. Right, let's have a look at this rock as well. There's quite a few crabs underneath. Well, there's a female carrying eggs. See how she's got the eggs underneath her pad? Get her back. There is another little tiny sea urchin. And that, I don't know what type of, that's a, a, that's a type of an enemy, but I'm not exactly sure on the species of that. I'm gonna have to check up on that. But here also is, A brittle star. Yeah, I'm gonna to have to get a photo of that and I'll find out the name for the for that type of an enemy. What an absolute stunner she is. A little brittle star coming in for some screen time. Just wanted to be in on the action, didn't it? There's that urchin moving away. But that anemone there is just beautiful. There's your bearing for scale. Looking into here, this is a perfect little cave. And another sign that's leading me to believe there might be something in here is this. This is the discarded shell from a lobster. And you see all like the little bite marks around the edges. When they shed their shells, they sometimes eat the old shell, just for the added calcium. So there is a chance there might be a lobster at the back of there. Still a little bit too much water in there for me to have a look right now. We'll give it 10 minutes. There's something running around, see him? See it hidden in there? You have to be fast with these. There was a male velvet swimming crab. This is an interesting little guy that I've just found. If you can see it there in my hand. That, oh, I'll tell you what, he's fast. He's a squat lobster. And they swim by flapping that little tail there, look. That little tail there. This one is actually, it's got a parasite. That is a parasite living under there. See if it'll come off. If they come off easy, it means they haven't had, there look, that's come off really easy. That means it hasn't had a chance to attach itself properly yet. I'll squish that in a second. If they're properly, properly attached, you're better off leaving them. There it goes. They're incredible, aren't they? I don't know if the colours show properly, but it's bright blue and red. Are you off? Let it go. See you later. Yeah. Generally, with things like parasites, 
I like to leave them be because you have to let nature take you have to let nature take care of nature. But if they come off really easily like that, just take them off. These are a favourite of mine down here. Two different types of snake locks in enemy. Green with purple tips, and that one there is like a brownie purple. See if we can't find one in a shallower pool. I've just noticed something hiding down there. See? You have to be careful when you're handling these because they are spiky. There's one, and there's one. That one there is a male, that one there is a female. I'll show you the difference between the two in that she has a large pad there where she will where she'll hold her eggs. And he has a narrow V. God, he really wants my fingers, doesn't he? Now, they were probably co <laughs> in cahoots to try and get up to something rude. So I'll leave those two to it. It is the time of year after all. A few of our eagle-eyed viewers in the past have noticed these and they've been asking me what they are. You see like that green ball there. And there's one, and there's one, and there's one. Those are the egg sacs from a green leaf worm. I'll put a picture of it up there in the corner. But that is what they are. Oh look. <laughs> As if he swam right into my hand. Where have you gone? Up here somewhere. That was a little tiny white bit. Oh there's another one of those. Oh there he is. Doesn't know whether he's coming or going, that guy. There's another one of those egg sacs. Underneath here, I love these. These are star ascidian. There, and there, and there. And they are colonies. Colonies of little organisms. Just fascinating, isn't it? I love it. I'm, I'm just mad for it. Here is one of the snake locks and enemies out of the water actually. Look. Some people when they touch those they get like a burn or a like a stain on their fingers. I've never suffered with it, I don't know why. Oh, if ever there was a crab cave. Nothing in it though. These types of kelp here, these ones, are a sugar kelp. And this one here, I do like these ones. These are called a furbelows kelp. Like them little rivulets down the side of there. That's the anchor. Well, you can see where it's torn the rock off. That's the anchor that anchors it to a rock. And these sway about up in the tide. Look at it, it's just like a leather belt in it. That'll be a quarter of an inch thick. And what's that? Inch and a half, two inch. Crazy. Yeah, big reams of this. Sugar kelp as well. A lot of the areas that I've been looking in, because of all the bad weather, all the caves have been filled with sand, they're all full of seaweed. When we have bad weather like that, a lot of the crabs and the obsters, they move off into safer water. So this is an example of what happens. Crabs and lobsters won't want to be stuck inside of a hole when there's a lot of sand moving around. Because they can get stuck in there, they can get buried in there. This is what I'm talking about. This crab here, 
has been very lucky, hasn't he? You can just to say see him hiding there. Watch. He's ready for it. That is a male velvet swimming crab. You can tell it's a swimming crab by those big paddle legs. His Latin name is Nacora puba. I always thought that was quite funny. As kids we used to call them devil crabs because they have red eyes. And they are fast when they want to be. See about putting your back in your hole. Let's get you back in there. Stay out of bother. You can eat them, you can eat velvet swimming crabs. We have taken them in a few other foraging videos, but they yield such little meat because they're only so small. I don't usually bother taking them. Well, there's a really big strawberries and enemy. One, two, three, four cushion stars. There is a little goby. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it right on the end of my finger. There it goes. We have a little edible crab here. Yeah. back under there you these here that is called a stingwinkle it isn't actually a winkle it's a type of whelk it's absolutely stunning isn't it you would not have believed this if you'd have seen the weather yesterday. Anyway, I've slipped on my bottom twice. I've got one wet welly and the tide's changed. So it's time to go. I hope you've enjoyed joining me. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later.